Portland Community College's Rock Creek campus is surrounded by rich agricultural land. The campus itself includes a working garden that uses holistic techniques for growing food. The garden grows plants and the produce from these plants feed people. What people leave as food scraps are fed to worms who convert the scraps into compost. The compost is then returned to the garden beds and feeds the plants. Plants, people, and worms. These are the three components of the Rock Creek Loop, and they are connected in a cycle of nutrients and energy. At Rock Creek, vegetables, fruit, and flowers are grown in the greenhouses, the hoop house, and the learning garden. So I love gardening and it's really a good chance for me to explore and uh, see the whole process. So I'm here in the Hoop House, which is a space that the Learning Garden shares with the Landscape Technology Program. Um, they have classes and programs in here and um, we use it to grow food. We built these raised beds so that we could grow food through the winter. As the produce becomes ready for eating, it is harvested and then sold or donated. On a typical harvest morning, we look at our harvest list that Nora makes and then we all go out and harvest. Yeah, I make a list uh, every uh, Monday or Tuesday. Just come out and take a farm walk and make a list of whatever's ready. Today we've got beans, broccoli, cabbage, cantaloupe and watermelon, carrots, chard, collards, kale, we've got kind of salad mix kale and bigger kale. We've got cucumbers, um, a lot of flowers, we'll make some flower bunches later. Um, garlic, hot peppers and sweet peppers, onions, spinach, summer squash, tomatoes, basil, tomatillos, radishes, and potatoes. <laughs> That's the majority of it. From there, everything is weighed so we get the appropriate data on what is harvested that particular day. So I'm weighing cantaloupes to be taken to the farm stand and we just harvest them from the back field and there are 41 pounds of cantaloupes. Then it comes into the washing and packing station. Here we wash, prepare it for the market either in bunches or bundles or pounds and then from there it gets put on the bike or the trike and hauled over to Portlandia Farm Standia. We have an on-campus farm stand um, every Tuesday. It's called Portlandia Farm Standia. The name was chosen in a popular vote. And we sell food to the community. We take food stamps. We have um, volunteers can volunteer their time in the garden and receive free produce at the farm stand. Thank you. are all picked because see that's going to be ready to eat today. Once the Portlandia Farm Standia sales are done, the excess food then is going to the Women's Resource Center food pantry to be given out free for students. How are you? <laughs> All right, so what do we have in here? And we've got lettuce and other pre-consumer food waste from the cafeteria. Uh, these are food scraps that they can't serve to customers, uh, but we can compost. Plant and food scraps are also collected from the learning garden and other sites on campus. And inside the worm bin, you're gonna see uh, paper and food waste and you can see that these are the red wiggler worms inside of here. They're about an inch long. These worms, we feed them twice a week, between two and three buckets of food waste, depending on how hungry they are and how well they're doing. And then we also add in the paper as a carbon source uh, to help balance the moisture and to facilitate making compost. So at the bottom of the worm bin, there's a screen that moves back and forth and the compost drops to the bottom uh, underneath the bin right here and we scoop it right out.
The finished compost is then returned to the garden beds that need to be replanted. So the purpose of compost is to bring in fresh organic matter, bulking up the soil in the bed, be it raised or in ground, and also adding fresh nutrients. We add the compost as a top amendment, broad fork it in, aerate the soil, and then add either direct seeds or transplants and water them in. And the loop continues. This year we grew three different types of basil. This is a rosy. We also grew Thai basil and a Genovese, which is a traditional basil, and they're just all stunning and beautiful this time of the year.